So I'll call the meeting to order, 605. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions or, to, or amendments to the agenda for this evening? Nope, just to <clears throat> let you know that the Fran and Bruce will be on at seven. They did confirm today. Okay. Move to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And, and we'll open up to public comment. So if there's anything that anyone has um, on their mind or would like to bring up that's not on the agenda, now's the time to do it. Um, I would just like to say that the Bethel for All and the Bethel Recreation Committee um, Valentine event was a big success and thanks for everybody that came out. It was wonderful. Good. It's good to hear, Ellie. Yeah, thank you so much for doing that, Ellie. That's great. I'm glad you had a good time. And the weather was okay for you guys, Ellie? Well, we had wonderful sunshine, then we had rain, then we had wind, then we had sleety snow. So oh, we, had all, we had all Vermont weather. <laughs> it was all represented. <laughs> it was all represented. And the kids, they, were, people kept warm and the kids love making the s'mores. Uh, did you have a good turnout? Yes, we had, I think, over 50 people there. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. terrific. Oh, thank people, you so much. Yeah, people from Tunbridge, Rochester, Hartford, South Royalton. And families, lots of, lots of kids that love making this some more. Oh, good. Oh, thank you so much. That's terrific. The only thing I had noticed, Ellie, uh, on my travels this weekend is that um, that Royalton also had um, a festival going on at the Green um, at the same time as yours. Yeah, I wonder Something how. Something to look into next time to see, you know, yeah. may, may have attracted more people. I know. Was I, I was wondering if, to, to see if um, any feedback on how theirs went because um, because theirs was a skating chili festival mm -hmm. and and our we didn't do any ice skating it was all sledding and cross country skiing so I don't know if their ice rink was um, available because ours wasn't yeah it was pretty warm yeah yeah, yeah so I would love to to hear how theirs went. All right, any any other public comment? It's a busy bunch tonight. All right, so we will get right into the agenda. Um, so like Therese was talking about, um, uh, this meeting as well as the meeting on the 28th will be um, doing our budget, um, public informational hearing on those. Uh, tonight, we we're just going to go by um, the articles that will be on the warning. Um, I know we have a, a section in there for public comment after the articles, but at this point, the articles are what they are. Um, you know, so if anybody needs any more explaining, I guess we could do that as a board. But uh, this time, there's, there's, there'll be no changes to the articles because um, we've already gone to print. Um, right. So articles one through seven are just, um, people running unopposed, yeah. obviously, then, um, we don't, someone could do a write in, but these are the ones that will show up on the Australian ballot. These are the correct. ones that got the consent of candidate form in. And so we're on the ballot. So, so, so Therese, just to clarify a write in, somebody who wanted to do a write in thing does not have to fill out paperwork with Pam. No, nope. no, nope. they, nope. they would put an article in the Herald or whatever, you know. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, uh, yeah, today. because the state, um, there was the, you know, the legislature said there was, they didn't have to do a petition. And then the consent of candidate is just to get on the ballot. So yeah, somebody could still launch a write-in camp, uh, campaign and then, um, you know, see how it goes. <laughs> but you're right, a letter in the Herald or however they want to advertise. So yeah. Um, Chris, do you just want me to say who's running for these and then see if anybody has comment after? Sure. Yeah. If you want to, Therese, why don't you take the one through seven? Okay. 
So article one is uh, Rick Benson is running again for moderator. Uh, article two uh, and three, uh, town clerk, town treasurer, Pam Brown is again running unopposed. Uh, four is Dave Eddy is running to fill Dave Eddy's seat. So he's also running opposed. Uh, Lindley Brainerd also running a post. She's Lindley's running to fill Lindley's seat. Um, Lister is Mo Brigham. He is running to, this will be his first three-year term. I think he came on as a portion of other terms. So this will be his first three-year. Um, and then the trustee of public funds is again, uh, Rick Benson is running to fill Rick Benson's seat. So that takes care of articles one through seven. Great. Anybody have any questions with articles one through seven at this time? All right. And then article eight is the budget itself. Uh, Rich, right now, um, uh, right now is uh, $2,418,146 of which uh, $1,983,678 would be raised by taxes and $434,468 uh, comes from non-tax local revenues. Um, and just to get a little bit, <clears throat> I'll just kind of go through an overview of the budget. If anybody has any questions, uh, uh, just put your hand up in the chat room and Teresa or myself will uh, We'll monitor that. So our budget this year overall, if we're comparing it, the uh, first part of the budget is the revenues. The revenues uh, year over year are down about $5,000 from last year. The changes for the most part on those, and we talked about it at our meetings, is um, a couple of years ago, because we had such a large list of uh, delinquent tax taxes, collections, which came with penalties and interest, um, some of those revenues or those a portion of those revenues had been built into future uh, budgets. So um, with Therese and her administration doing a really good job of collecting those back taxes, um, we are now starting to see that the penalties and interest uh, line on the revenue end of things is lower. So we've, we've started to make that adjustment so that Ideally, it will get back down to zero where we should be because uh, everybody's paying their taxes. There's no penalties or interest or any delinquent taxes. So, um, so we're slowly moving those numbers towards zero. So, um, so a majority of the revenue shift was, was shifting those towards zero. Um, the overall costs in our budget are up about 37,000 year over year. Um, the net the net of our budget is up 42,000. So if you take the uh, 5,000 less in revenues and add the 37,000 increase in costs, we have a net increase of 42,000 on the taxpayers of Bethel. Or if you wanna break that down by the cents on the tax rate, it's just over two cents. So 2.1 cents on the tax rate. That's also based upon our current um, that is also grand list. Yeah, I'm just trying to grab my sheet there. Based on the current grand list, uh, we don't anticipate the grand list moving much this year. I know last year we had a similar uh, budget where we were going to be just under two cents, and the grand list moved uh, actually considerably last year to the point that it it um, uh, brought us back down to zero. Uh, but we don't anticipate that this year. On the cost end of things, um, probably the biggest mover on the cost end of things was retirement. So that's probably not a shock if, if you've uh, listened in on the um, select board meetings here over the last three or four months, or probably, well, what was it July uh, when it changed, is the, um, the retirement percentages increase in the state of Vermont. So uh, right now, we've had to <clears throat> include about $25,000 more in retirement funding for this budget over last year's budget. Uh, How much more was that number? I'm sorry, I'm trying to take it. It's right about 25,000. Okay. Uh, year over year. 
Yeah. Um, we've also, uh, we, I believe last year was the first year of our ditching program, Therese. Is that? Mm, I don't, I, uh, wait, actually I have the budget right here. Never mind. So I'm to the budget. It'll tell me in that column. I hate to. Uh, we've, had, we've had very good one of the issues that we've had in the town and in, in our town roads is getting water properly off our roads into the ditch lines and and keeping the ditch lines and the erosion under control in our roads this will be our third year third year yep uh so this is our third year so two years ago we decided to put some money in our budget to contract out services um you know uh, trying to figure out you know how many miles of road that would be you know, divided over the number of roads over a period of time that we think that every so many years it should be ditched. So um, I believe we started with 20,000. We are now up to, on this budget, 30,000. 30. Yep. Right? Yes. Um, and, you know, so we've had a really good time of uh, good bang for our buck on uh, going out there, ditching our roads and getting, getting um, a potential uh, erosion issues under control before we get the, you know, some of the bigger storms that we've seen in the past. Um, at the same time, we've been doing our culvert changes and, and uh, items like that. Um, we still are paying, um, paying or um, have budgeted to finish paying our ERAF. So in the spring of 2019, we had a flood event that happened uh, in our area. Uh, we took care of all of our projects um, 19 into the early 2020 uh, season, um, except for we still have the bridge to finish. Yeah, uh, so this, I don't know if this number, I mean, this does not take fully into consideration um, Pinello because right. we don't have the final engineering numbers, but this should, I'm thinking this will clear up um, everything including p vine and then pinello is just we're still waiting for hopefully i'll have this maybe in the spring we'll have a uh construction you know engineers construction estimate for the cost of that bridge and we're kind of redesigning so we were going to do something a little different now we're going back to put it in the same spot so that'll be more eraf for another couple of years which and if anyone the eraf is the 12 and a half percent that bethel has to pay for FEMA work. Um, Bethel's done a lot of work to drop that from 25% to 12 and a half. So, um, you know, that's just so people know that's what we're budgeting for. So we can take care of that as we go along. And, and we had decided as a board <clears throat> back in 2019 that we would uh, responsibly take care of our debt um, in advance rather than take loans out and borrow on interest. So, um, this will be the third budget now that we have included ERAF um, money in there to pay back our loans, um, which we've done a good job. Actually, in some cases, we've been ahead of the curve where we've set aside money and then we haven't quite finished the projects yet. So uh, we've, we've done a really good job of retiring um, that debt. Uh, now, some of the stuff now is we use our own capital fund money. Basically, we're borrowing money from ourselves because we have money in capital funds so we're able to say have a deficit in the FEMA fund 89, but yet we have money in other funds. So instead of having to take out a loan and pay interest to Mascoma, we're kind of managing it, you know, in-house for as long as we can. So. Sure. And, and then, uh, you know, at the beginning of our budget <clears throat> series, uh, we had uh, openly talked about um, the constable and the constable's budget, <clears throat> um, which, uh, you know, we, uh, at that time, well, the struggle we're having in Bethel is <clears throat> historically we've been able to find part-time constables to help us out and share amongst our communities, our local communities. So, you know, Hancock, Rochester, and Bethel um, combined to have a full-time constable that we shared um, years ago. Uh, once, once that individual moved on, the next individual that we had come in um, we shared between Killington's community and us on a full-time basis. <clears throat> and since um, that indiv individual's left, it's becoming very challenging to find um, a, an accredited officer uh, to fill the role on a part-time basis. Um, all the law enforcement agencies are, are short help. 
um, as well as uh, Teresa and I were talking today, you know, the going rate for an officer right now is 28 to $30 an hour, um, where we used to pay what, 18 to $20 an hour for the constable. We so, were paying I, like 17 to 17.50. So it's, yeah, so the, yeah. the rates have gone up. So what we've been challenged in our community is, um, you know, we have two individuals that put time in, in the community, but both of them are working full-time jobs with others. And one of those identities right now is, has a mandatory overtime period because they're short. So our service in our community right now, you know, we've, over the years, we have promised uh, 20 hours a week of service in our community. And right now we're getting, you know, less than eight hours a week. Um, so we're not going to solve it in this budget, but it is definitely going to have to be a piece that we're going to have to talk about on how we, how we service our community and, and attract um, an experienced accredited um, individual that wants to come and, and work for us. Um, but for this budget to, to, um, to gap that conversation, some of the, some of the issues we, we continue to have is speed in around the village areas. Uh, we had purchased um, two speed signs last year um, to update two old ones. And we had decided as a stopgap that we would that we would purchase two more speed signs that we could put up so that all four legs of the village area would have speed signs. Um, so it's a start. Um, so we had at, increased the constable's budget by eight thousand dollars to purchase those speed signs, which I believe are solar. Um, plus so, the portable speed car. Plus the portable ski. Yeah. So that's kind of a bridging the gap there. Um, obviously, speed enforcement works best with both methods, uh, speed yeah. cart and some sort of enforcement. Um, but right now, we're going to go with the speed cart and uh, try to get uh, try to figure out the enforcement piece here soon. Um, and then it wasn't a lot, but we have talked about over the past couple of years on um, it. What we had saw at the town, it was just like our fee structure at the town is there, it was very outdated. So, you know, when we went through our fee structure uh, a year and a half ago, you know, we had fees that, you know, maybe we were charging someone $25 and it cost us $100 internal to process the paperwork. Um, so we updated those fees. And this year in our budget, what we're starting to do is update some of the compensation for uh, appointed individuals or elected individuals. And I wouldn't say that we are 100% where we'd like to be, but we're starting to um, starting to shorten that gap. Um, so you'll see it's not a lot of money, but we have increased some of the <clears throat> appointed positions um, on that. So it's not a again. I think it might have been only a difference of about a thousand dollars, but it's um, start to move that needle. Um, just trying to attract people that want to do this. Um, it does take a lot of time or gas or, you know, everything else to, to, to do certain activities. So, yeah, because we did add, um, this year we added the fire warden, the tree warden, because we don't, still don't have a tree warden. And one of the things that, you know, we definitely need to revisit is the health officer. I just really think that's such a too small of an amount of money um right. but that's where we are right now but in our next budget iteration that that's gonna have to go up there's that's you know that's gonna have to be i don't know twenty five hundred five thousand dollars i mean it's gonna have to go up that's a lot of work to be the health officer there's a lot of paperwork a lot of responsibility so that's something we definitely have to revisit um in our next budget cycle right so that, that's kind of the big overview on the budget. I mean, there's a lot of smaller things in the budget that, um, that we have in there to do as well. Uh, we want to do some repairing to the, to the rock wall um, outside of the town hall. Um, so there's, there's numerous other um, identities in there um, that we have for this year. Uh, but those are kind of the biggest things. Um, and when we had set the budget, um, about a month ago, uh, you know, the, the biggest things that we had agreed as a board is that we thought that we had a, a good responsible budget for now as, as well as continuing to look futuristic in the town. And, and at that point, I think we came up with about 1%, um, Gene, correct me if I'm wrong, we were at 1% and 
And we decided as a group that we, we would add another 1% worth of uh, costing into there for futuristic programs. So, um, so we've built some extra money into the uh, future um, on some projects that we have coming. Does, at this point, does anybody have any questions in regards to the budget? Yeah, I do, Chris. Just to, to clarify a point on the, the page that says budget comparison report. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at it today and under human services agencies, uh, that number actually, and I'm assuming, Therese, you would know, our human services amount is only in the 26,000 kind of range. Yeah. But I'm assuming that that number represents not only the human services agencies, but also the other ones like the library. Yes. And yep. So that's yep. all combined into to get that number. Yes, it's um, listed. That's the way they've done it in the past. So it's a combination of those the human services plus the other local appropriations. I think. Right. They, okay. So yes. Yep. So that is a maybe, combination. Yeah, maybe down the road we might want to add that part to the to the description. Okay. Yeah, it's the way they've done it. So I think we've just yep. kind of carried it through, but maybe we need to separate them out. Comment on uh, budget comparison report. Thank you. And for anybody that didn't know, we, we did have, um, the Bethel Library had asked um, for an increase in, in funding last year as they, they had a lot of outdated um, electronic um, equipment to replace and and kind of going through their budget you know I think it kind of like some of the other ones is we have so many outdated appropriations out there of you know maybe monies that worked five or ten years ago that don't aren't necessarily to the time so um, we decided as a board to keep the um, funding for the library at the higher rate um, again this year um, and I think we're going to start looking at some of the other appropriations to make sure that you know their monies make sense with growth opportunities so um did we have any other questions in regards to the budget hi gene hi julie glad you guys could make it hi julie i can't you're muted julie but um so i have the minute through the um, budget if you want to start at the next article. We've got the meeting started at 6.30. <laughs> oh, okay, because we had done it for two times in um, January. Yeah, so to accommodate Chris's schedule, then we went back to six. It's all right. I figured Sorry. you were somewhere. <laughs> it's oh, fine. Yeah. I'm just glad you're okay. Yeah, um, we're fine. I'll start from the when you're done with the budget. Yeah, perfect. All right, and I'll, I'll fill in the blanks later. Yeah. So, um, so unless anybody has any other questions, we're done discussing Article Eight. Uh, <clears throat> did you want to? Um, well, Paul, do you want to go over Article um, Article Nine? Not to put you on the spot, but uh, yeah. Now, again, a quick overview. So, the Human Services uh, Committee uh, consists of. Um, Carol Ketchum and Sandy Farrell and uh, Stan Capron and myself. And, and this year we had uh, one member of the public, um, Scott Putney joined us um, and he had a lot of uh, input. He's had a lot of exposure to, to several of these organizations and had some really good uh, input on it. And, I've, and I think I've talked him into joining onto the committee. So you'll be seeing his letter of interest coming up when we do appointments um, after the uh, town meeting. So we get together uh, once a year. We send out letters in October and in November um, requesting that the various <clears throat> nonprofit organizations that we usually contribute to as a town uh, submit uh, paperwork to us that uh, requests certain amounts of money that, that they would like to see us uh, support. And we also uh, ask for documentation concerning their financial position so that we know uh, that they are truly nonprofits and, and uh, get a good idea of where their income is uh, generated from. 
And we've also in the past couple of years really impressed on them that we need to know what they, uh, how many local Bethel residents they actually um, impact uh, in numbers, specific examples of how many Bethel residents that they actually interact with. So we uh, met in early December and reviewed all the uh, information that was sent in by the various groups. And we looked at the dollar figures that they were requesting and went down through each one, discussed each one thoroughly and uh, came up with uh, the uh, list of numbers for, for funding. Um, and we sent that along to the select board and it was approved and, and it uh, appears as, as it is in the, in the town report. Um, if any, and if any of the, we also included this year, we changed, we took out the picture. The picture was <laughs> not very flattering, but we put in instructions because there are a lot of local groups like the Cub Scouts maybe, or, or you know, other organizations like that, 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 that could, you know, possibly benefit from uh, filing for appropriations. So we put in a little instruction manual on that page that describes the steps that they should take if they're interested in submitting uh, an application for uh, appropriations. It's always been part of the town of Bethel to support these, these organizations. Um, town has, has always uh, taken advantage of the services and that's only increased during the pandemic times. Um, so it's, a, it's a, good, a good way for a small group to help to get some support too. And uh, so if anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, answer them. Thank you very much. I'm actually really happy that you put the instructions in there. I think that's great. I, I think that um, you're right. People don't think about it. And um, so I think it's very handy. So I'm really glad you guys did that. So thank you for thinking to do that. This is uh, Judy from Safeline. May I just uh, enter the conversation to thank Bethel and the citizens of Bethel for your ongoing support. We greatly appreciate it. Um, as you know, during pre-COVID, we always tried to have a representative at the town meetings, but now there isn't really a place for us to connect with, with the folks in the same way. But we very much appreciate uh, your support. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Oh, we're glad you could join us tonight, Judy. Thank you very much. All right. So that takes care of article, <clears throat> article nine. Um, article 10 is in regards to the White River Va Valley Ambulance. So the White River Valley Ambulance serves um, the citizens of the town of Bethel. Um, and uh, our portion of that, I can't remember on the sheet in front of me, but we make up uh, what, 45% of the pie? I don't even want to hazard a guess. I don't have their report in front of me, so yeah. I'm not sure. Or I actually, imagine, actually I might imagine be it's a that. larger portion just because of our population. But um, uh, Us and Randolph make up a majority of it. I would think. But Royalton has their own, so it would make sense. That, yeah, that we're the bigger. Uh, so, so our our portion of it for this year is one hundred and twenty seven thousand eighty dollars, which is which is up about thirty two hundred dollars from last year. And if I remember right, last year's was a, a level. Um, let me flip that from here. the previous year. Um, we're pretty close to it. Let me look. Um, hang on, I have to look at the budget. So it really hasn't gone up much. Yet. Yeah, last year was, um, okay, so we had, our actual was in 2021 was 121,800. Then 21-22 went to 123,830 and now we're up to 127,080. So I'm sure as they're having a, you know, there's a shortage and they're having to pay staff and things like that just because, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to find volunteers as we know. Right. But obviously a great organization. 
Yep, so that's Article 10. Anybody has any questions with any of these, um, if I go through them a little fast, just feel free to raise your hand. And even if we're out of order, we'll uh, definitely get your comments in there. Uh, Article 11, again, is um, just the authorization for the payment um, for the taxes. So those dates are listed there. Yes, I checked. They are all the 15th. <laughs> so it's always a question. So we did go through and double check. And just as a reminder, your property taxes are due tomorrow. <laughs> well, thanks for throwing that out there. Hey, you know, I'm just having a good day today. <laughs> trying to do my part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squeezing us, Teresa. Squeeze yeah, us. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, uh, and, and feel free, any of the board members, I, I, you know, we spent a lot of time with the budget um, as we have the last couple of years to make a, not only a realistic budget that, um, that we feel we can afford as a community, but also one that is futuristic in projects that, um, that we feel we need to accomplish. Um, so if any of the board members have any comments in regards to it, feel free. Okay. So you did have a couple people tune in later. If, I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything before you adjourn that public hearing or you've got Dick, Kirk. So for anybody that tuned in late, um, you know, uh, overall the budget's going up uh, uh, between the revenue and the um, costs. It's a net increase of $42,000 over last year, which equates to um, 2.1 cents on the tax rate. And feel free, I mean, it, it, even after the meeting, if somebody wants to reach out to me directly or any of the board members of Therese would be more than happy to you know, talk through the numbers or answer any questions. Um, I, I know that the books uh, just got out Friday Trees. Oh yes, a town report. Yep. Um, yeah, I think yeah. that they were mailed. We received some. People should have them. Hopefully, some today. We had. Um, we picked up some from the post office that the addresses weren't correct. So Kelly's. Luckily, it was a handful this year. We've really culled that list, and um, so uh, she's getting those addressed again. And actually, the postmaster, postmistress was very helpful. She took Pam's list and went through it and made any corrections. So we really only had a handful of reports that came back that we were tracking down better addresses for now. So, um, yep. yep so Mine was in the mail today. Excellent. Yep. Ours was in the mail today. Perfect. So we'll, and we'll do another, obviously public hearing on the 24th, 28th. Sorry. Today's the 14th. 14th. 28th. Yeah. 28th. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Sorry. And um, then, of course, you'll vote at the school um, via Australian ballot. Um, the ballots are prepared 20 days in advance, so people can, multiple ways you can get a ballot. You can call the town clerk's office and request one. You could call um, the town manager's office 24-7 and leave a message on the answering machine. You can go to the Secretary of State's website because Pam has set up the election there and you can request one that way. You can stop by the office. So um, there's certainly plenty of ways for people to get their um, their ballot. So, and also you can vote at the polls. All right. So at this time, we'll just entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing of the budget and to enter into the normal schedules. Was that Paul? No, I'll so moved. Yep. Oh, sorry. There was a weird echo. Yeah. Paul moved it. Second. Lindley seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So now we are at our normally select board meeting. Uh, we do have our, I'm looking here at the Brady Bunch screen here. I thought I saw someone pop in. They, they pop did. Off. They just signed okay. on. Or I saw them and then they popped off for a second. So maybe they're just having technical difficulties. 
Well, we're a little little ahead as well. So I guess what I was going to say is uh, if we see him jump back on, we will get right to them. Uh, we do have an appointment, uh, Bruce um, Staples, for um, 7 o'clock. Um, we do have 20 minutes. So if the – and I don't see them back on again. So if everybody – if the board's okay, I'd like to just move forward with the um, results of reappraisal RFPs, um, and then we could just take – uh, Bruce, when we see him jump on. Is that okay by the board? Yeah, um, I'm just going to send them a quick email because they heard you adjourn. I wonder, I want to make sure they didn't think you adjourned the meeting, just the public hearing portion. Um, sure. So let me just quickly send them an email. Um, I'm just saying we just saw you sign on. So as um, as the board inspected the packet, so we'd been talking about, well, we've been talking about it for a little bit here now on the um, uh, the reappraisals um, for the town and what might be our time frame and how much that might cost. Um, you know, so we started putting some money aside at the last budget and we've spent uh, on and off uh, this year on talking with the listers in regards to, you know, getting some sort of pricing and some type of time frame locked down to do the reappraisals. Um, so as you saw in the um, in the packet um, yeah. through the RFPs that Nemrick um, Nemrick came through. Um, at a lower rate than we had anticipated that we've been saving, which is good. Um, and I believe that this would start the reappraisal process in July of 2023, uh, which usually the reappraisal process is what? A, a little over two a year? Years. Two, two years. years. Two years, yeah, it's a two year. This would be a two year role. They used to be, Chris, back in the day, they were always a year. Now they do what they call two, sometimes a three year, depending on the size of your town, rolling reappraisal. Um, so yeah, I um, I put in there along with the RFP, I gave you to let you know how much money was in the reappraisal fund currently. So obviously we have enough money right now to pay for the reappraisal. Um, some other costs that won't be covered in the NEMRIC reappraisal are um, if, uh, say, we need additional um, software or anything like that, um, the time for the printing of the postcards to be delivered um, in advance to let people know about when the um, reappraisal folks will be coming to your neck of the woods, um, the paper that gets generated at the end that lets everybody know, you know all about the reappraisal. So there's certain expenses any of Mo and Judy's time, uh, Louise's, whoever's listers, that's over um, what their normal budget is. If they're putting a lot of time in, we'll take it out of there. So, um, but it's also good too, because as you remember, we did a um, drafted a capital fund um, plan for the reappraisal money. So we also, and that number actually was is high because it's just what we thought at the time. So we'll be able to adjust that moving forward. So helps us know we need to get back on a schedule where we're doing reappraisals uh, more regularly. Waiting for over a decade to a decade and a half is not a good plan. Um, so this will help us budget and plan for the future reappraisals as well. So if we were to continue putting aside what we have been, what would that would that provide sufficient funds for what, five years, seven years? Well, if you have your town report, I don't have a copy of it here at my house. Yeah. So um, there is a schedule in your town report okay. of the capital plan for the reappraisal. I think I used the number of 171 instead of 121 because that's what we had, uh, you know, we were kind of making some assumptions, uh, Mo and Judy and I. So we'll be able to dial it back a little bit. Um, 
for future. So if you look at that page, I don't know what page it is right off okay. the top of my head, Jean. I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'd hate, I don't want to quote something and be wrong. So I apologize. Right. I don't have it with me. I actually didn't get a copy yet. So I, have to, <laughs> so I actually don't have a copy of the town report. And I'm just kind of realizing that now that we're speaking, I'll make sure I get that tomorrow. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we may be able to dial that number back, which would be great. So obviously, so, so, you can... let, let me throw something out there now. So we're looking at a two or three year process to go through. Do we have a plan for backup for Mo and Judy to kind of go out into that, the next three year, you know, period, um, I think it's good that we we might want to think about how we're going to address that two or three years from now. Yep. I mean, we talked about it. Mo is obvious. Mo's comment to me was he was hoping to that they would fin that he. I think that Mo is hoping to retire after the reappraisal is finished. Um, but you know, you just never know. And because they're elected positions, we don't have a plan. Um, and that's why we had put in that before that ten thousand dollars for the back to possibly having an appraiser um, because people aren't, you know, uh, um, applying or volunteer or running to be listers right now. So hopefully um, that changes. That may be something that we need to tackle in the next bud budget iteration as well, Paul, is in the past, you know, this is not a highly paid position, but yet they generate one of the most important documents for the town and the state, frankly, for school tax. So it's, um, but right well, now, no, unfortunately, I don't, we don't have a plan because, <laughs> because they're elected. And, and there's also going to be a lot of pressure on the BCA um, when this, at the end of this, mm -hmm. when, when the um, hearing time, when the, you know, when folks get their new assessments, it's going to be a lot of pressure on the BCA. So we're going to make sure that that everybody's well, up to, you know, up to speed there too. Yeah. Well, hopefully not. I mean, you know, I've seen this done really well in the past and seen reappraisals go where you really don't have a lot of issue. I mean, the good thing is that Nemric will have to deal with, you know, some of the reappraisal stuff when people come in at the end of, you know, and they, and they do grievances, they're going to be part of it. But you know, I've seen it done really well, Paul, where you actually have less grievances than you might normally. So um, it's it, it's going to be hard to tell right now how it's going to turn out, but hopefully with good communication between owners and stuff. And but I will, you know, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. But you're right. If things start going to the BCA, you're right. You'll have to do a training for the BCA just to kind of get everybody up to speed on what to look for and what the process will be. But I'll move. We approve. Okay. Jean's got a motion. Lindley second this. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. So that'll be something on the clipboard I'll get out tomorrow for you guys to sign. Um, and that's a come to the back door, right? You you can come in the back. Yeah, tomorrow's tax day. I suggest if you come in tomorrow, come in the back door. I'll put it on a clipboard or um, because I have a meeting 9 to 1030 and then the tax sale at 1230. So I'll be busy, but I'll try to get it out in the morning by 830. All right. Anything further in regards to the reappraisal? Any questions on that? See none. Hear none. Uh, we'll just continue to move on until we see our appointment. Um, so next up, uh, Teresa, I wanted to uh, talk about the tax sale, It'll be held on the fifteenth of February. So we, I don't even remember how many we started with, but we're down to one two three we're down to five so that's good i mean i when we when i did a tax sale in 2019 i started with hey it was a huge list um and i think when i started going to tax i was at 40 some odd properties got down to 11 and sold nine and so this time we're down there detri has done an excellent job um 
no tax collection sticking with it. So I feel like at this point, I know of the one, two of the five, but I have bidders <clears throat> on um, all but, oh, there's one in here she doesn't have. Oh yeah, no, she does. I, have, I think currently I believe that we'll have bidders on four of the five. One of them is a property that has been in someone's family for a long time. But what happened is many years ago, somebody left it, like deeded, broke it up so that the land was in five different people's names. So over the years, those people have not carried it through in their own wills and they maybe this relative can't find people. Um, this gentleman's dad had paid the taxes for years. Then this gentleman paid the taxes for years. And he finally he was trying to work with his lawyer to get um, to get everybody to sign off and it didn't work. So he finally just said, I'm not paying the taxes. And what he's gonna do is he'll bid on at a tax sale if no one bids against him and he ends up with the property back, then in 12 months after the redemption period is over, he'll walk away with a tax collector's deed. So his plan was to clean it up um, that way. One of the properties was abandoned. I tried selling it in 2019, didn't have a bidder. I'm hoping that we'll have one this time. Um, there is a piece of land for someone who is deceased and there was no estate and people and the family weren't interested in taking that piece of land. Um, so there's leaves us one on uh, one left that I'm not sure is going to go up for tax that's on South Main Street. I'm not sure if there'll be a bidder or not. But what has recent I spoke to the town attorney about it. He always discourages us from buying anything at tax sale. By the time you buy a property, um, perhaps this one, especially at tax sale, and you go through the 12 months, if you have to go through the eviction process, right now the lawyer's saying that the process is a bit daunting and courts are not in favor of, of eviction. That's going to cost us quite a bit of money. Then to clean it up, if you came ran into something big, would you be demolishing? He's not sure we even would stand a chance of breaking even. Um, but he did forward me today a couple new programs that are out for people that are delinquent in their taxes and water sewer. We've had that offered before um, and the homeowner just didn't apply, wouldn't apply. And um, so hopefully uh, my plan is to try to set up a meeting with them in person, um, get them to come into the office and sit down with them and get them to fill in some paperwork. So even if this property doesn't sell at tax sale tomorrow, I'm hoping that um, we will be able to get them some aid to clean up their delinquent water, sewer, and taxes. At this point, property um, owes the town just over $17,000. Um, you have abated some interest and penalty, which I appreciate, and they were making uh, regular monthly payments of about $500, and um, not sure if they still are. I, th I think so. I'd have to go back. Yeah, I know they made one not long ago, but I feel like there's enough aid out there that there's an option for us other than buying this property at tax sale. I, I frankly agree with the town attorney that I just don't think we should pick this up at tax sale. I understand that eventually <clears throat> you want to do something because you can't continue to keep tax sailing properties and not have them sell. But at the same time, this is a process and, you know, the eviction alone could cost us 10 to $15,000 if it came, if we had to evict somebody. Um, we certainly do not want to become landlords. Uh, that's a even bigger nightmare. And I just, um, oh, I'd, I'd like to see if we can't, um, despite getting them for not getting them to apply for aid, maybe certainly trying to get them to apply for aid now. Um, so that we can at least get this down and they can get it manageable and can stay in their home. But that's my two cents. If you guys want to buy it at tax sale, that's something else. See how so, the um, tax sale goes and. Yep, so it's tomorrow, 1230. We did talk about you authorizing me to purchase any pro property at tax sale, but that would be the only one. And I, that's, I think it's going to be a nightmare. I think right. that it's also going to be, um, you know, staffing. <clears throat> We're going to have to pay the attorney to do a lot of work because I don't have time to do it. And I just, I'm not sure it's the best option for us. Right. Um, I don't know. That's, that's your call. I mean, there's pros and cons. But. So 
what is the option if another year goes by and we don't and they don't apply for relief uh, what what's the option to the not option buying it is they stay there <laughs> and we tax sale it in another year or two depending when we do another tax sale so either in another year or two we tax sale um, and they're still owe and we tax sale them again but we incur the fees, you know, legal fees and stuff uh, when we do that, whenever we tax sale. So it just adds to um, what they owe. There obviously is a lien on the property. So if they were to try to sell the property, the town would get, you know, we would get paid obviously just because we have, you know, taxes and water sewer. So there's a lien on the property. But um, I guess one of the conversations we had last time at the last meeting was how long do you want a resident to to continue to owe this much money at, at some point it's it's unfair to the other residents so that's that my was question kind of, yeah that was the yeah. conversation we had i believe at the last meeting yeah and i wasn't there right um, yeah exactly so uh, that's all gene it's it's you know it's one of those situations and is how many has this the first time it's gone up this will be the second time that i personally have put it up for tax sale I don't know about prior times. We had, we had gone, Gene, we had gone, well, in, in around when I got on the board, we had gone a, a period of time where um, we hadn't done any tax sales or heck, I don't even know if we had payment arrangements with individuals. We just kind of either collected taxes that people handed in or just put it on the balance sheet. So, um, so I know, and Therese, Therese can back me up on this one. Therese got here. It was a very long list of yeah. uh, delinquent tax, water, and sewer bills. Um, mm -hmm. I think probably the best thing we can do is let's see how this tax let's see how this tax seal goes, and and then have Therese report back to us on you know how successful it was, and and then if we do have that same property that doesn't sell and there is no urgency to want to help themselves um then then the board probably should put together a plan for the next opportunity on what we want to do with that piece um, yeah because again it's either tax sale it or you know buy it i mean there's basically there are only two options at this point right exactly well, we, know we, want, we know what we went through with the one up on sugar hill there even if we go in there and do all that and clean it up and go through and spend all that money and then sell it, we still have to, we ended up writing a check. Well, <laughs> so, in this case, uh, I'm not sure you'd I'm make not sure that. If that we, same this thing. case, you might not, yeah, it might be the other way around. In this case, we'd be lucky to break even. I don't think yeah. there'd be a check going to anybody. By the time <laughs> we pay off everything that's owed, you know, delinquent taxes, water, sewer, paid you know, any legal costs for eviction to manage it, to clean it, to, oh boy, there, there's a, there's a chance that we would end up eating an amount but, of money. But if we put it off, we just end up eating more, right? Possibly, yeah. unless we can get them to apply for some aid. Um, obviously with, with COVID money, there's, you know, there's a lot of money in the state this year. Right. They, they uh, would have been eligible for money before. And I had reached out to them, called them, gave them a number to apply, offered to help and hadn't heard back. So I guess I'm going to have to make my request a little bit more urgent or demanding and, and see what we do. I mean, we could always, frankly, you could do another tax sale if you had to in six months and just tell them if they don't apply, we'll tax sale just their own property again in six months. So which I, I yeah, it just it just gets worse. So I it think does. at some point, uh, the amount we would lose just gets worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so true. if we keep putting it off. So yeah. uh, what you just suggest, we may want to uh, put a tax sale of that property on a fast track if we can. Yeah, I mean, because it goes up tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. somebody may be bidding on it tomorrow that i'm not aware of you know if obviously yeah. if i um sell okay. your property at tax sale it's if i say to you gene i'm going to sell your property at tax sale you're like okay if i say to you gene i'm going to sell your property at tax sale, and i have a bidder 
<laughs> then that's a whole different motivational tool for you. Right. So certainly we're trying, that's one of the things if we put it up, we're looking for bidders and there could be somebody out there that's coming to bid that I'm not aware of. Um, I certainly have been trying to solicit bids um, from people to get people to come in and bid, but also Stitzel Page and Fret Fletcher has a list of people that come to tax sales that they send out. Also, um, it's been in the paper. So there could be somebody out there. So um, I, you know, obviously we want the people to stay in their home. That is a best case scenario. And so if we can get them to get some aid, then maybe he, um, the couple will, um, you know, be able to afford to do that. So that's obviously our wish for everyone. And we still, I mean, I think this property is the last one from, we'll call the original carryover yeah. issues, but you know, we kind of are our own worst enemy here because we, in some ways, enabled certain individuals to get over their head, right? Because mm -hmm. um, uh, we did spend a period of time there where we weren't really managing that portion of our business very well. So we did allow some people to get way over their head. Maybe if we were dealing with it on a yearly issue, maybe they wouldn't have gotten over their head and could have you know, continue to afford what they were doing. Maybe not, but. Mm -hmm. Well, and they are, they were, like I said, making $500 a month payments. And I know one came in recently because the amount for the tax sale dropped. So right. it's not like, so you know, for a while there were no payments being made at all, but now, you know, there are, so. So they're making an effort. We just, so we could encourage them to make an effort and get some help. Yeah, well, I'm, we've been trying, but um, well, okay. well, we'll make it a new focus. Thank you. So it sounds for like what Therese questions. Was, mm -hmm. Sounds You're like welcome. what Therese was asking the board was, do we want to give her any permission to buy any properties tomorrow, or or it sounds like the board for the most part isn't interested in that. Is that correct? I'm, Not there at this is, point. Yeah, there is one. The other one is the one um, property on Hidden Glen Road. And um, that will be the other property that didn't sell. So the, the two properties that did not sell in 2019 are Hidden Glen Road and the one on South Main Street. And um, but I had talked to a gentleman and I may I'm feeling like there may be a bidder on the Hidden Glen Road. And that's one where the gentleman just walked away and lives in Royalton and just left, said, see ya. And uh, his property is on at twenty six thousand eight sixty five. Um so, and, and that person is paying nothing. There's no water sewer, that's just taxes. Um, so a, that's a 1.96 acres of land in a mobile home or double wide. And I'm not sure uh, obviously the condition of that mobile home, but so we may end up with the two again that didn't sell and we'll have to regroup and, and think about what to do. But I did speak with a gentleman um who i think was going to was gonna bid on the hidden glen so i'm fingers crossed he does okay. otherwise we got two and we're really gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do here all right are we any further discussion regards to the tax sale or are we good to move on with our appointment move on all right so just want to welcome Fran and Bruce Staples. Um, so if Therese, if you want, um, you could just maybe um, give us a little overview on this. Um, so tip, so typically when we do any type of <clears throat> potential water or sewer um, abatements, um, uh, what we do ask for is uh, so that we can get a good picture and to be as consistent as possible with what we've done with others is to uh, one give us a picture of kind of the property what you're using the property for now or in the future um, and and whatever your um, desire is uh, I'll make an example I'm looking for uh, abatement on my water and sewer for the next three months because I am uh, completely gutting um, the apartment and uh, you know I won't be receiving any income and in, in during that time so it's got to be kind of a what exactly are you looking for what the time period is um, 
so that we can make a, a decision on the matter easier. So I'll just turn it over to Therese and then Bruce or Fran can speak on their behalf. All right, so I have, so Bruce and Fran wrote a very nice succinct letter here that says uh, on October 31st, the property, their property located at 92 Pleasant Street. Their property is across the street from our entrance to the rec area. Um, mm -hmm. And it was vacated by their tenant. It says this property will remain vacant until sold and please adjust the water sewer rate to a vacancy rate. So when I'm not sure what year, 2019, I wanna say, you amended your water sewer ordinance so that if someone, if it was their home and it was a residential water sewer, then they could be moved to a vacancy rate if say they went to Florida and they shut their water off. Um, they would be moved to a vacancy rate. The commercial property, um, as this is not Bruce and Fran's main home, um, you had said that they had to come in front of the water sewer commissioners, which is the select board, to determine, um, you know, what to determine if you were going to put them on a vacancy rate. So, Bruce, just to clarify, this is just your this is one of your rental properties, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. So. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's the deal. So obviously this is what you would term for your ordinance, a commercial property. In the past, obviously you've done this for several properties who were, like you said, gutting. You just did it recently for the Merrill Baths on Main Street. Um, you gave them a three month, I believe it was three months, uh, reprieve on their water sewer bill because they're going to be redoing that building, um, you know, inside and, and on the outside. So you'd given them a break on their water bill. I think it was three months. Wasn't it a quarter? Yep. And I remember off the top of my head. So, um, do you, is it still on the market, Bruce, your property? Yes, yes it is still on the market. Okay, great. So basically you're just asking the board to move you to a vacancy rate until you sell it. Exactly. We don't want to uh, get anybody to move in there because then they're just going to have to move back out again. So it makes no sense. So there you have it. So if you have any questions for Bruce, that's um, pretty straightforward. You know, that's his request, obviously, is to, they're not doing any improvements, but it's on the market. I'm surprised you haven't sold that thing. I figured there's such a shortage of properties on the market. I figured someone would snap that baby right up. I know. We can't believe it hasn't gone yet. So, but. Have you had a lot of showings? We've had a few showings, but nobody's made any offers on it. So. Hmm. I'm surprised we had a realtor in not long ago and she was like, there's like five houses on the market, you know, between Bethel and Randolph. So she was complaining about a shortage of inventory. And um, certainly we've talked about it a number of times here. They're saying there's about 4,000 unit shortage of about 4,000 housing units in Vermont by 2030. So I'm surprised that someone hasn't uh, bought that already. Yeah, no one's, no one's made a, an offer at all. They've, I know quite a few people looked at it, but I mean, it, and it was remodeled a few year, quite a few years ago. So when we first mm. bought it, but yeah, nothing. Bummer. <laughs> With the Therese, just um, I just wanted to be reminded on. So uh, in the past, when we've gone to vacancy rate, have we gone in and physically turned the water off, or have we left that one on? For that? No, it just left it on. I mean, when they're showing it, um, I go in there and uh, keep the pellet stove going. And, um, you know, every once in a while I'll go in and uh, do some mopping and stuff just to keep the house so it looks nice. Okay. So yeah, so with commercial properties, no, we don't tend, you don't, you haven't usually turned the water off. You didn't for baths, you didn't yeah. for, I think when you did Dylan's, when they remodeled Densmore, I don't think that you, well, I think his was just off because <laughs> he was remodeling Densmore um, when, they had done those apartments there. So I think he, was, he wasn't using water at the time. And then I think he did um, redid an apartment and then, you know, we turned it on. So for commercial, the, the couple that I can think of, you have had water on. I know um, one of the properties on Main Street is on a vacancy rate, some of it, but it does have access to water because it has something else in the building being utilized. So normally for residential, if someone goes to Florida, and they drain their house down and we put them on vacancy rate, then we do try to shut the water off. Um, 
A, if we can locate the curb stop and B, if the curb stop works, but uh, we know there's no one in there using water. So, and, um, but in this case, certainly uh, for commercial, we don't normally make them turn the water. Off. Was this a, a, like a one EU? Uh, it's a single family house, single right, family. Bruce? Yeah. Yes, it's a three bedroom house. Yeah, so it is. So the, currently we're in the schedule that we, um, Right now, well, the water bill will come out in this month and it bills for, it will cover January, February, and March. So we always are billing for a month back, the month we're in and a month ahead. Um, so for January, February, March is what we want it for then. Or is it too late for that? So, so, that, uh, so, is it, so how are you guys doing the prorate? Because we have had it vacant since November. And I'm trying to figure out in the past, all we ever had to do in the past when we had the church street, because it was a two unit apartment. If one of them was vacant, we would just call you guys up. We'd write a letter and they would say, okay, how long has it been vacant for? Usually we try to wait a month because we're not going to do it just one month, but if it's been for a couple of months, what we would do is just to tell you guys and they would say, okay, we'll prorate it for the back. Cause we're not, if it doesn't get rented for a few months. Now we're kind of like, I, I mean, what we're looking for, I guess, is to do, so you said for the three months would be um, January, February, March, correct? I'm just saying the next billing is this month would cover January, February, March. Yes. So if we can at least get, because um, the vacancy rate for January, February, and March, and then we'll revisit this again, that would be perfect. Okay. And then, and that way, I think that will keep better with the billing time. It will be kept better with... You know, so we're not like, okay, a little bit on this month. If we could just do it by that way, that would, I think that would be for easier for billing as well as for, and just say, okay, let's revisit this. Cause it's kind of hard when you're doing rentals and it's expensive for water that we're not, that we're paying for that we're not using. And that's how they did it in the past with the church street apartment. Cause that, that pleasant street apartment has been rented for the last, what, 14 years. Yeah. 14 At least years. 14 years. We've haven't had a tenant in and out of that apartment for over 14 years. Hmm. So, so the well, policy that you re prefer to is no longer the policy, right? That ordinance, they used to do that in the past and they gave people like a $25 vacancy rate, which wasn't even close to covering. No, it was uh, more than that. Our vacancy rate was a lot more than $25. Okay, I good. wish it was, that, that would have been like, yeah, you know, that would have been great. Uh, but no, it was more than that. It was a percentage off. For not using it, I can't. I could look in the past, but those apartments have been rented. But they gave us. We only had to pay a certain percentage of it of the water and a certain percentage of the sewer. Was that prior to 2019? Yes, it was prior okay, to 2019. Yeah. So it all it changed was then, because then what they started doing is sometimes they they don't always grant the request um, for vacancy rates. So um, that's so it has to come to the select board for. For vacancy so, rates would, for commercial so what's the rules for the select board then what are your rules so, so i know like what i could read I, I mean i can request all i want but if you guys i would like to know what your rules are like you're saying well this is what i want well i could like but well, what are the what are the regulations that you guys have set for vacancy rates what are the rules for it? and then i could say okay this is what we could do with that or i could say well i know something we could do nothing with it and you know it sucks to be us and we have to pay twice as much on our, because we have the church street apartment as well. And we're paying a ridiculous amount of money for a one bed. We're paying double that amount for a three unit, for two bedrooms on one side and one bedroom on the other. And we're paying double the amount of everyone else that's got a full house of six, five bedrooms, four bedrooms. So really, I think we've paid our fair share in on this. And I think that should be taken into consideration that we're paying like a lot of money for our water and sore. And you and I met, your, um, a little bit back. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah, is this is one of the big things that we're not selling our apartments with, especially the two unit one, is because no one wants to pay per unit. One bedroom costs just as much for the water and sewer rate as a five bedroom. And that makes it a little that's one of the things that's a tough thing to sell on our two unit apartment. It's a two unit, one bedroom, two bath. I mean one bedroom and a two bedroom. We're paying more money, just more, twice as much than for the Reds house. And so with that said, like, that's what we're like, we've been paying on all this, this whole time minus when we didn't have it rented. So tell me what, I mean, if you guys could tell me what are the regulations that you guys set up um, so that way I could say, 
hey, we can meet that. Hey, we can't meet that. Because if I decide you guys aren't really going to offer me too much, then I'm going to start renting this place and keeping it looking at, you know, on, on traveler's bits or something like that. Because so what are your, I mean, but if it's worth it to me to keep this thing vacant because I'm not paying this astronomical rental for our water bill is almost as much as our mortgage is. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's high. So what do I have to do to say to you guys, this is what we're going to do. What are your regulations? What have you guys set for a standard, I guess, is my question. So for, for, I mean, and, a rate. and trees can jump in at any time, but what, the, the issue we had in the town um, years ago was that we really didn't have a very formal system. Um, you know, uh, there was many different combinations of vacancies or taking somebody off water or, or how much, uh, you know, how many apartments and how many EUs we were charging certain people. So, you know, we dug through this two or three years ago to really say, well, well, two things. One, you know, let's make sure we're, making it fair for everybody. Two, we had some, like what Teresa was saying, we had some vacancy rates that didn't even make any sense. Like, like we'll charge you a $25 vacancy rate, but it actually costs us like $75 to deliver the water to the house, you know? So even if you don't use it, just a delivery system. And as you, as you've seen with the, you know, the main street water line upgrade is we have a lot of old, old infrastructure that, you know, needs to get done. So the town of Bethel, we have an EU system. So uh, based upon, and, you know, different, uh, when you're in the residential section, it is one EU per house. Um, where it starts to get tricky is when you get into the commercial setting um, or renting apartments, the EU system stays with the formula. So, you know, if you have a, a building that has, uh, you know, two separate apartments in it, then that might be two EUs, one EU for each apartment. It's not that it might be, it is. Right. I mean, so it's, it is. It's not might be, it's not, well, we could consider that we're getting charged double. It's not by the bedroom. It's not by, which is, but I mean, that's another issue in itself. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to figure, I know all, like, what I'm trying to figure out is when someone's requesting a vacancy rate in the town of Bethel, what is the select board's rules and the town manager's rules on what to get a vacancy rate. What so, is the set rule? There's got to be some type of set rules. Or is it, if I can make a good case for it, like that doesn't, and what makes a good case? Well, currently the ordinance that they adopted stated that um, residents could request a vacancy rate and that their water would be shut off. And the, the, um, amendment to the water sewer ordinance had stated that commercial properties were not eligible for a vacancy rate. So, um, but I believe that I'm just, just looking online for their next amendment. I think that what they ended up doing was amending it again to state that um, it was, I think that you had to come in and, and speak to the select board because that was one of the that was their ordinance amendment was at one point was commercial properties weren't even eligible. They just assumed that if you had a vacancy, people would have had to budget for it. But um, then I think that they reconsidered and I was just looking online to see the ordinance itself. And I feel like, didn't you guys amendment amend it again, Lindley to after that? So because you did allow vacancy rates for commercial properties. And I felt like maybe you amended it to say that, it was on an individual basis and that people could apply because at first it was passed and then you felt it was harsh. So you guys went back and said it had to be done on a case by case basis. But the only, the ones that they've done so far are people that have come to the select board and requesting a three month or six month abatement while they did work to the property. Um, we had one on livery stable that the gentleman was going to put a bunch of money into the apartment. So he asked for a vacancy rate and they granted it to him for, I believe it was three months. Same thing on Densmore. Um, the McCulloughs came to him. They were, came to the board. They were doing a bunch of work on their property. They granted them a three months and maybe ended up going into six months. Same thing with Bath Merrill on main street. So what they've done in the past has kind of had a precedent that the only time they granted a vacancy rate for commercial properties was if that property owner was putting money into the property itself. 
to upgrade it. So the select board was trying to give them a little bit of a break um, while they, um, you know, worked on their property. So but it's basically the, the you guys town, made it up as you went along. Like there's got to be some type of regulations that are being set. There's got to be there some is. type of standard. <clears throat> So I mean, it's not going to be like who, you know, or can I give a good story? I can write just about anything you guys want me to write. I can speak and tell you exactly what you want to hear. I'm trying to do this the right way. What I need from you guys as a select board is tell me what the regulations are. What it would adhere to the water sewer ordinance. And, and okay. that, I'm just looking online to see if I can see their most recent amendment. And I don't see it online, exactly. right? This That's minute. my point. And so I don't think that it's fair that you guys are just going to make this up as you go along. And I'm not mocking anybody. I'm just telling you the way it is. I need to know if I'm going to be budgeting, if people are going to be investing into this town and buying apartment buildings and you get someone like the Page House that's got five units, four units in it, and they're getting charged four times as much. And then if they have a rental that's out, I would have like right now, like I told you um, before, Trees, mm -hmm. is that there's no way I would ever invest in the Bethel properties right now the way it is. Mm -hmm. Because one of the big things that's really affecting our finances is that the water. Mm -hmm. I can't afford that much money when that apartment becomes vacant for a few months. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm seeing it now. We have that two unit one, and it's expensive. We've got our one unit one and it's expensive we have to consider that into our budget and then people are like why is it so expensive for your rent and we're pretty cheap on our rent it, because yeah. in fact we've had these properties <clears> for <throat> so long yeah so, so i could i would have to, have to make a decision on what the rules are going to be someone that's got a commercial <sighs> property what you guys want from me so that way we'll follow the rules but until then i guess like i'm pleading with you guys saying please like give me, give me some guidance on what you i don't want to hear we're doing it case by case because that's not really fair it should oh. be a same thing if it's like you could show a rental and you say to me like before i showed them the letter of the person leaving and they left and i gave it to you guys and said okay this is the renter that's in there he's either a getting evicted or b he put in his stuff and it's gonna have to be somewhat of a and then if they go back and they someone else moves in I ruined that for myself. There's not that many landlords in this town that if someone says like, and someone ruins it for you and we sign a contract saying when this, when this says to somebody that someone else moves in, we're going to take this out, but let's start it right here. Someone gave me their notice of leaving they're vacating their notice of vacating the apartment. I give it to you guys. When someone else moves in, that's what that goes at. So yes. Brad, if I can jump in. Sure. You haven't given us an opportunity as a board to discuss the case you've put in front of us, but you've bit, you're you're sort of oh, accusing us of not making a decision or not giving you the grounds. But we haven't had a chance to discuss it, and you're doing all the right things. You've taken the steps. We were giving you an opportunity to plead your case, which Therese gave us the groundwork. You've given us the next layer, and then the next step is we as a board discuss it and make a decision. And so, just give us an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hear what you're saying about the what are the rules and ground, you know, what's what's the framework that we're working with. And we actually, as a board, really tried to leave it not as hard and cut cut and dry, because originally our our policy was that for commercial properties, there is no vacancy rate. And so you as the owner of a commercial property would be on the hook for the full amount, regardless of whether you had partial oh. rental, full rental, no rental, you have it on the market and it's fully vacant. But we felt that that was too harsh and not fair to the folks like yourselves and many others that are investing in Bethel and are trying to make available housing that we want we want to work with both parties. We want to work with you as the investors, but we also have to uphold what our job is, which is run a functional, financially viable system. And so as a board, we weigh those two things and we've intentionally, and, and other board members, please jump in if you feel I'm off base here, but we intentionally left it a little bit open-ended to give folks like you a chance to vocalize your needs and to meet you where your needs are. And so the next step in this is we will discuss, can we meet those needs? What, you know, what are your needs? And can we as a board be both fiscally responsible to the town and the water sewer 
and help you meet your needs. So I, I hope that helps clarify it a little bit. I get that it, it feels wishy-washy. It feels like we're not making a solid set of rules, but some of that was actually to help folks like you in the position that you're in and understanding that our water sewer system is really expensive comparatively, but it's also, we're all stuck with it. We don't have an option that's different. And so we're working with what we've got, just like you're working with what you've got. And so I think you just need to bear with us for the next next few moments, let the board discuss it, and then we'll, we'll see where we land. How's that sound? So uh, I had a question uh, yeah. of Therese. Mm -hmm. uh, the, did you say that when a, a residence, a resident uh, leaves a property or and asks for a did you actually shut the water off? Yep, that was part of your the ordinance that the select board adopted so, before you came on is if a, say um, we have a couple of snowbirds and they go to Florida, then yeah, then we usually shut their water off because so the, you know they can and then they go to vacancy rate. Right. But um, the staples, I think, said that they did not want the water shut off because they are showing right the property and having it on is important so i think that is a consideration uh, having said that i believe that what they are requesting is reasonable and reasonable is a uh, legally <laughs> a definable uh term and I mean, I, I think it is a reasonable request in that sense to, uh, so I would be open to what other board members believe, feel. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel the same as Gene does. Um, I think just to stick with the formality things, um, I guess the only thing I would like to see is that we stick with, so by the quarter, um, like we have in the past, um, so put a, a date on it, I guess. Um, so I guess what we're talking about right now would be January through March. Um, so I guess <clears throat> what I would be looking to do would be to allow the vacancy rate, you know, backdate it from January through March. But then if it goes beyond March, then we would have to take, take it back up again. Now, hopefully, you know, with the real estate doing what it's doing, then it'll sell and we'll have to do it again. But I know in the past that we've we've made uh, certain dates to any of our motions. So, um, you know, I, I would like to stick with that. So at least we have the formality there. Yeah, I agree with what Chris was saying. I think that it's, it's completely reasonable. And the, the recent precedent that we've set has been sort of a quarterly check-in, which feels really reasonable to me. Um, I would, and I, this is sort of a question for Therese is, um, if we make a motion, I, I would recommend that we do it in such a way that it, it states very clearly that this is um, strictly to the ownership of Fran and Bruce, and that if the property sells, this does not, the vacancy rate does not carry with that, uh, that it would reset to the standard rate. Um, and then the new owners would be under the obligation if, if they need, because they want to do renovations or whatever, that they come before the board again, but that um, yeah, I agree with Chris to review quarterly, but I would vote to allow the the vacancy rate for this quarter. Right. So you'd basically make the motion that the vacancy rate is granted from January 1st to March 30th, um, as long as Bruce and Fran are owners. If it sells before then, then we'll prorate it from that the sale date forward to the current rate. Yeah, I would agree with that completely. I think it's totally reasonable to to, to grant this part and keep it on a quarterly basis. You know, a lot of folks are frustrated with the water <laughs> situation in Methyl, uh, but we're trying to be, as, as Lindley stated very well, uh, trying to juggle both sides, trying to be fair to everybody, but also trying to maintain a system that, that's really starting to get better, but uh, still needs quite a bit of work and, and it's fairly expensive to, to maintain. Mm -hmm. I see Dave Eddy has his hand up, Chris. Oh, he does. Yeah, no, no. Using my hands. 
Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. It just, it was a hand on my screen. I'm sorry, Dave. But a little funky there. <laughs> I, I think we should make it clear that we leave the water on. Yes, of course. Yeah, case. we're not shutting it off. Yeah, no, no. Right. Well, and Therese, uh, I think you stated this earlier, but we don't shut it off for commercial properties, just residential. So they technically wouldn't okay. shut off. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Shut off. And we've had those issues in the past, Lindley, because you may have one shut off to the building that has five apartments in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> So it may not be physically possible to shut the water off. Okay. Uh, my recollection was we, as a board, decided to make that a, a, a standard rule because you right. have some properties that can't be partially shut off. And so in, instead of doing it you know, unit by unit, it was all commercial. Right. Yep. Of course, there were some of those areas at one point where we didn't even know where the shut off was. It's still <laughs> true. Still not so. that we found them all. So if somebody wants to make that motion, then Bruce and Fran could move on with their evening. <laughs> do, do you have language that we can pull from that? I, you sort of stated something earlier, but I couldn't just. I think that you just need to make a motion to approve their uh, vacancy request for 92 Pleasant Street from January 1st to March 30th. Um, and if the property is sold during that time, then we'll prorate it to the full rate um, but as, but for until March for 30, 30th, spit it out trees, March 30th, um, as long as it remains in Bruce and Fran's name that you leave it at the vacancy rate. So, I mean, I can make a motion out of that. So moved. I'll also uh, put in there that it'll be reviewed again at the end of March. Um, if necessary. If necessary, yeah. Sure. Hopefully it'll be sold. Okay. Well, that's the thing. Yes. That's another thing too is that if it sells in the middle of a um, or something happens that I mean, just say like something just so should mm -hmm. happen in the middle of it all. Like, what would we all want it? Like, how is that? What are the regulations for that? Just say like we sell it like in the middle of. Oh, uh, just email me. I'll just calculate. Just email me and uh, Fran, or and uh, no problem. What I'll do is I'll take the I'll take the vacancy rate for the. 90 day or 91 day how many days are in the quarter and we'll divide it um the rate to come up with a per day rate and multiply it times that take me five minutes so if you sell it which i hope you sell it tomorrow and um but if you do well just let me know and i'll happy to prorate it for you it's just that it takes a while nowadays to get the um because we just sold our other two properties in randolph pretty quickly mm -hmm. one of them sold in three days or two days i think it was two days. and mm -hmm. sold quickly but it took still over a month Almost took, two months. Yeah, took three months three to months get rid of it. To get to get the between appraisal to get. So oh that, yeah. It's yeah, it's, so, it's three to four months once you find somebody that's going to buy it easily. Ab absolutely. Yeah, we'd heard that the delay in appraisals, lawyers being busy, and I, I'm sure we'll just end up leaving it for you through March. I'm just saying, personally, I hope that you sell it because I, I know that's it. your yeah. goal. We do too. Thanks. Yeah. So just let us know, and then if you still have it at the end of March. Just send me an email and it will have the select board revisit the topic because obviously you'd request another i'm assuming you'd request another three months after that so just send me an email and we'll take care of it Excellent. Well, I'll, second vote. Vote. I'll second the motion hey all in favor hi hi guys have it all right thank you for your time this evening friend thank you, thank you. And, and and before you leave i think we have established precedent if it is reasonable request and the uh and and for a period of 90 days uh the that those appear to be two things that the board select board would be looking for appreciate it. like i said we just got to set some type of standard understand is, i mean that's the only thing i'm asking like and, and yep. we're getting out of the real estate but, business but the word reasonable gives us flexibility, but it also permits you to, you know, to understand what we're going to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's right. my two evening. cents. Thank much, guys. But thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good night. All right. And picking back up to our. <clears throat> Uh, agenda we had left off at the annual financial plan for town highways and town road and bridges standards yep that's pretty 
Let me get through that. Standard as far as uh, not awesome. pretty standard. The standards. Yes, I was just gonna say it doesn't make much sense, does it? Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we go through the annual financial plan. Obviously, we we do this every year. Um, that's something that I have to submit to the state. I guess they want to make sure we're you know spending our class highway information. Uh, Kelly got together the information for obviously we have the whole every lists everybody's phone numbers for the select board and the road commissioner village clerk all that so um so it would be two separate motions one to approve the annual financial plan for town highways um would be first and then second you would make to make a motion to um adopt the um town road and bridge standards something we do every single year at this time Therese, the only thing i see is that my mailing address is incorrect okay uh, let me fix it right now hang on paul valley okay what is it paul so it's p.o box 495 all right thank yeah, you 24 riches is the physical address okay perfect thank you i yeah. will get that fixed did anybody else have a address correction or anything Okay, I will put, I just wrote it on there. Thanks, Paul. Sorry about that. So we just need a motion to accept the annual financial plan for town highways. <clears throat> so move. Second. Okay, move. move by Gene, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ayes have it. <clears throat> then I just need a motion uh motion for the certification of compliance for the town road and bridge standards so moved hey okay, lindley moved it second okay second by paul all in favor aye all right aye. go there <clears throat> And Therese, uh, last thing on our agenda there was a discussion regard, regards to snow removal. Yeah, so this came from the equipment committee, actually. the uh, We had a meeting last week about, um, we have had a couple meetings about what to do about snow removal as far as uh, our tractor that we have is, is not in great shape. And, um, you know, it was one of those things. I don't think it was the right piece of equipment when it was bought at the time, it wasn't, you know, stored or maintained properly, all these things we've inherited. So um, when they met a while ago, I had to think about this, they had talked about getting a skid steer and they were pricey and they talked about getting one used. And then Alan had an opportunity to bring in a used sidewalk machine that another town was selling. And, and, um, they, he brought it up to the had it delivered to the town uh, garage you know just to have people look at it and, and obviously and it wasn't what they wanted it was too big they didn't they felt like they were going to be in the same predicament not the right piece of equipment to do the job then alan specked out a john deere tractor um and that was what we met about to talk about um last week and they the guys on the equipment committee felt the same way they just said we we don't feel like it's going to get us where we need to be because we don't have someone currently or i say the word we don't go out and plow the sidewalks for every two or three inches so their fear was again that this piece of equipment wasn't going to be the right piece of equipment so we're back looking for a skid steer probably about 30 you know we've seen some uh for about thirty thousand with a thousand hours and they want to put like a heavier duty maybe snowblower that'll chop up ice and, and deal with it that way so but one of the things that came up was <clears throat> they said look do we even have to plow the sidewalks and i said well actually there's a statute so the select board could request or you know could have some town there are a couple towns where residents have to take care of the sidewalks that abut their property um some towns i think maybe do it for just the downtown business owners so this <clears throat> came from the equipment committee because they said well think of the money we'd save if we didn't have to deal with sidewalks and sidewalk plows and and this and that so i gave you the um the 24 bsa 2291 um 
which says, you know, one of your enumeration of powers is that you can provide for the removal of snow and ice from sidewalks by owner, occupant, or person, person, you know, having charge of the um, budding property. So I cannot tell you how many towns currently have an ordinance. I tried looking for it when I had, you know, 20 minutes one day and I only I found Brattleboro, I think had an ordinance um, that I put in here that, that says that um, upon, you know, but it was specific streets. They had it laid out that for certain streets that the property owner shall clear all snow and ice from these adjacent to their property within 48 hours. And of course you can see their streets listed there. So I'm not sure, um, you know, I feel like you currently have some business owners who clear the sidewalk in front of their property, but this is also residential. This is people who live abutting a sidewalk. So I'm not really looking for you guys to make any decision tonight. I just want, I told the equipment committee, I would bring this to your attention and at least for you guys to start thinking about, about what you think about it. Um, I was, I went to uh, get pizza Saturday after the uh, big snow. So it was 48 hours and none of the, uh, none of the shops on the pizza side of the road were accessible. Uh, I, and it was, uh, if some, if a car parked in front of the, the walkway that had been pushed, that the owners had been pushed through the, to get to the street, you couldn't get into the, into a, into the place. Uh, and I think we are currently looking into how we make Bethel more accessible. I think making Bethel's businesses accessible uh, is uh, is an appropriate thing for the town to continue to do. I uh, so I just that's I I would fall off the the on the side of the town committee continuing to provide that service uh, to make because it's an accessibility issue. Okay. Lindley, yeah, you were I, starting to say something. I I actually spent a lot of time thinking about this and not just this year or this past storm, but for the last three or four years um, as a downtown business owner, I really deeply appreciate the assist from the town in snow removal. And I know that um, a few members of the board might even remember this part of the conversation. One of the really big things is because our streetway is so narrow, when when the side when the streets are plowed it tends to get plowed up onto the sidewalks which then makes it extremely wet and heavy snow because it's had all the traffic running through it and it's denser and it's really difficult to move and this past storm is a perfect example we always clear in front of the arnold block and we couldn't we physically couldn't remove it and so if there had been a policy in place we would have actually had to appeal to the town to come help because it was so dense and heavy and then it froze up so quickly humans couldn't do it. And obviously individual business owners can't all own this kind of equipment. Um, and I think as a board, we've also, we've sort of discussed the wanting to foster elements of the business uh, business district, like Jean is saying, and that this is one of those, here's what the town can give you. I don't think it needs to be a given all the time that the town do it. And I think Therese, you kind of pinpointed a great example when it's a two or three inch storm, your plow guy doesn't come plow your driveway, you're still no. responsible for clearing it. And if you don't, it ices over and we all know the realities. And so I'm sort of wondering if there's a way to not create an ordinance necessarily, but um, to communicate with the downtown business owners about, you know, if, if we choose to continue to do this service, here's the service we're providing, here's why we feel it's important and what we're willing to do. But we also need you to meet us part way in order to prevent us from having to create an ordinance or having to kind of put it back on you. And so I wonder if there can be a, a more direct communication of what the give and take should be. It doesn't, it doesn't address the residential properties. And I know this is, you know, an ongoing issue that there, there are spaces that just don't get cleared unless the town does it. Um, and even if an ordinance was in place, w would they get cleared is sort of a big question mark in my mind. Um, so I'd, I would still be in, in favor of the town 
continuing the service, but I also know it's a it's a huge issue of what what's the right equipment um, and yeah. how to do it effectively. I think too that you know um, I think for the equipment committee they just were like, all right, look, we're going to spend thirty thousand dollars on a used skid steer. Um, you know, possibly, and then find the right equipment. I know in their last storm that we had, um, it, it was tough. It was, you know, we'd had people out earlier and had prior storms. So people, you know, went home and we ended up coming out and, you know, by then at some points it's coming down an inch or more an hour. We ended up bringing in, um, Dave Bergeron to do the sidewalks because we were, you know, our crew was just in the weeds trying to deal with it because it was coming so fast and it was heavy. So I think for the equipment committee, they were just saying, okay, look, you know, they're willing to continue to look into buying the right piece of equipment that they feel is necessary to do the job. They just want the select board to know like, Hey, you know, we're going to be spending 30 grand on a, on a use. So don't be cutting our appropriation. If anything, they are probably look going to be looking for eventually, you know, each budget year, a little bit more money, um, to deal with equipment. And so it was just something I told them that I would talk to you guys about bring up and that we could have a, a brief discussion about, but I do think you're right. I, I understand that business owners are paying water sewer rates. And if they're on main street, they probably have apartments and more than one EU and, tax implications, et cetera. So, um, but yeah, if it's just like an inch or so, it would be nice for people to be out and, and um, dealing with that. I also am waiting for some stuff, you know, information is going to come from our better, uh, the better connections grant. We're going to get a plan from Dubois and King, which is going to be helpful to us about sidewalks and accessibility and, and all sorts of ideas, snow removal, et cetera. So um, I, I just was bringing up something that the equipment committee was talking about. It wasn't meant to stir anything up. It was really just a conversation. And at this point they're looking um, into skid steers and they're moving forward. We're gonna have a meeting in, in the spring. They said no to the tractor. And we're gonna have a meeting in the spring, have them come back to the garage, go through all the equipment and, and have everybody come with some ideas and maybe uh, stuff that they're seeing for sale or maybe some options. And, and they'll go from there to make a recommendation eventually to the select board to buy something. But for the winter, we're going to leap, we're going to ease through with what we have. If frequency of use becomes a problem, because, uh, and especially with maintain, maintenance, uh, is it possible to contract with someone outside rather than, quote, do, doing it ourselves, but to contract with somebody to do that? You know, it's difficult because to find someone with the right piece of equipment and what's the cost going to be in the end, at least when you're buying equipment, you're making an investment into equipment. Whereas if you're contracting it out, it's going to be, you know, it could be a little bit more difficult. So, and I'm not aware of anyone currently who does that, not to say there's not somebody out there because I'm sure there is, but like I said, this wasn't for you to make any big decisions. It was just to have a conversation right. to see what the board was thinking well, and just, let you know what the equipment committee is thinking. And, and, and I'm just thinking out loud. So. Go ahead, Dave. Sorry. Who's going to say whose snow is whose snow? I mean, I've gone through the town and see the street is clean. Guys come through the plow. It ain't, it ain't, that sidewalk ain't clean anymore. So That's a good point. The, the streets are so narrow. You can't. I, I feel bad for the business owners. They really can't clean their place because there's no place to put the snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Because if you put the snow off the sidewalk, there's no place to, for anybody to park to go to their business. Well, and, and, and this last storm, we're so busy, uh, there was no place to park even in the town parking lot. I mean, you could get in there with a four wheel drive, but a regular car wasn't going to get into that parking lot. Mm -hmm. So we have no place to put the snow. So trying to get somebody outside that you're paying X dollars to clean the streets once, he's not going to come back after the plow comes back. And it, don't forget, it's not just Bethel. The state comes through with plows. True. And they move snow also. That's right. Well, I think it, and to jump off of what Dave was saying, um, I want to say it was maybe three, three to five years ago, there was actually a bit of a a bit of a fight between some downtown business owners where they were intentionally taking the snow that the plows plowed up onto the sidewalk and throwing it deeper into the street as sort of a pushback. And so some of this was trying to mitigate those issues that 
like Dave was saying, there's just nowhere else to put it, but putting it back in the middle of the street is really dysfunctional and harmful and unsafe. And so this was a bit of a, how do we come to a common ground and find, find a way to all move forward? Because yeah, the snow's there and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I think that Alan, they do a pretty good job now of coming back out at midnight, you know, a couple days later and, and scraping down and hauling away, which Doug and those guys did, you know, for years coming in and cleaning up. So, you know, it's always we live in a small state in rural America where, you know, I hate to say it this way, but suck it up. <laughs> I mean, this is the way it is. You get a 14 inch snowstorm. There are some things that are not going to be convenient. True. We'll, we'll do the best we can to take care of it. That's my yep. opinion. Exactly. So, all right, that's fine. Like I said, it was just the equipment committee. We talked about it. So I think you could just move on. I don't really think there's, we need to beat the horse here. We know we have at least three people or more who are not interested. So that's fine. I got my answer. And I think it's, on. you know, just like anything that we've done, I think it's a good opportunity with, you know, getting our accessibility um, drafts back and, I think it's a great time for us to look at both sides of it, but there may be a hybrid model too, right? Could be a, a make it up. If we get more than two inches of snow, then the town does it. If it's less than two, then the business owners do it or something. Maybe there's something, but also I would, it's probably a good opportunity right now to see what our neighbors are doing. So what does Randolph do? What is their piece of equipment or South Royalton, kind of a similar downtown kind of, you know, yeah they using how do they treat that um, we know what randolph does we've you know been through that so all right that's fine so but good opportunity you. to look at all of it and you know I'm, we're not going to do it for this year so we got plenty of time to figure it out for next year absolutely okay uh anything left uh Therese, on your town manager's report um, yeah, I, I didn't include one in the package this week. We're just too busy, but single, uh, the Sullivan Powers was there today to finish up our single audit, um, which we have to do if you spend over $750,000 in federal funds, which we would because of the um, $2.8 million water loan. So we'll, we may require a single audit again next year between the um, American Rescue Plan money um, tail end of there was a $324,000 invoice for the DWSRF and then anything for Pinello. So I'm not sure if we're going to need a single audit next year. Hopefully we'll be riding the rail, but it's 750,000 and then requires a single audit. Um, tomorrow morning from nine, at 9 to 10 30 i believe i have a meeting um rick benson and i who's the chair of the pc and the chair of the drb with um two rivers because we were given that grant to work on zoning bylaw amendments um with the seven towns surround you know with us and six other towns so that meeting is kick off tomorrow um along with the um tax sale in the afternoon i also want to let you know at our planning commission meeting last week um the planning commission is going to be moving forward with in their minds um cutting all the zoning district requirements for minimum lot size in half except for core and village so it would make um, a 20 acre 10 acre a four acre two acre etc and, and we'll kind of solidify that more as we go through this grant process with two rivers obviously a public hearings and all that just like we did when we were making amendments to the zoning bylaws before um, so just to let you know that's what the pc is currently thinking um, we have a better connections grant meeting wednesday uh, evening and that's moving forward um, that one will be focused i believe on more community outreach and things of that nature so those are just some highlights um, for this week. And I already told you taxes are due tomorrow. So we'll be busy, busy at the town office. All right. Uh, select board meeting minutes from the 24th of January. Anybody have any amendments or are they good to approve as written? I can motion we approve them as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And also in our packet, uh, we did have the um, budget status report um, as well as for several um, committee reports that were in there. So 
So make sure you have the opportunity to read through those. I also had in my packet a, a sheet that is headlined compiled 2017 personnel policy employee concerns. Oh, yeah, that was meant for me, not you. Yeah, uh, I had one. Time. Okay. Thanks. No, it's funny. I didn't realize I was, I had that in the packet. I'm working with Stitzel Page and Fletcher finally yep. to update our personnel policy. And I talked to John Clesh the other day and then I found that um, and actually had printed out and must have picked it up off my desk when I, um, when I grabbed the, uh, the stuff to put in the packet. So um, right now there's obviously it's going to be another month or so until the personnel policy comes in a draft form. I want to get John's updates, uh, go through my notes to make my updates um, that employees have brought to my attention in the past. And then um, I also wanna talk to the employees about it. I don't think it's right to just make a blanket policy change without their input, but there's a lot of things that just need to be cleaned up in our personnel policy. Um, and there's just some things that, that don't work um, in our personnel policy as well. So trying to, clear that up but um no sorry about that i just snapped it off my desk it's not actually in my copy so i don't see it i um, just want to say uh, uh there was a chat here just to share with you from Lily that um she just wanted to say that you know um we talk about sidewalks but so often the curb um cuts to the crosswalks aren't plowed and that's certainly an ongoing thing we discussed it at better connections and um, hopefully with a better piece of equipment um, and trying to figure it out that it'll get better. We've talked about that and we have truncated domes, which are the little bulby things that you walk across for people if you're um, visually impaired that need to be replaced. We have sidewalks that we need to address. That's one of the great things that's going to come out of the better connections. Um, so thank you, Lily. I didn't want you to think we didn't see that. All right. Any other business to come before the board before we enter into executive session? Uh, just a comment. Uh, we talked about the Better Connections grant, but I think uh, I would like to thank everybody who participated and thank the board for making it possible for us to have a bonfire last Friday or Saturday. I think it was a good time by all. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie, for all you did to help make it happen. Yeah, um, at the very beginning of the meeting, I, I did. Um, so, Jean, I'm sorry that you missed it. I made a comment okay. at the beginning because it was such a wonderful day and everybody had a wonderful time. So thanks again for bringing it up, Jean. All right. So at this time, I just need a motion to enter executive session to discuss confidential contract negotiations with the town of Royalton due to the June 30th, 2022 termination of the interlocal agreement. So we'll move. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right. While, um, while we're moving people out, Teresa, I'm gonna throw some wood in the fire here. Okay. Good night, guys. Thanks, see you later. Good night, Good night Doug, thank you. Thanks, Lily. Bye, Doug. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. See you guys later. Bye.